the sea. The great mantle that covers more than three quarters of our planet. The vast neutral barrier that separates continent from continent. From here came all living things, and herein may lie man's future. Throughout history, here has been a theater for challenge and competition among men. Here too are the major highways of commerce, communication, and friendship among the diverse cultures and political structures that comprise the world's nations. The sea routes which cross the oceans are paths of peace. But these great expanses of water may also become theaters of war. Paradoxically, the sea is also an important arena for the deterrence of war. Here, in the ocean vastness, hidden from each other, the submarine forces of the major powers serve to constrain either side from actions which would lead to hostilities. But effective submarine deterrence is dependent upon speedy and reliable communications. And in the Indian and Western Pacific Oceans, the separate needs of Australia and the United States are provided for by the joint United States-Australian Naval Communications Station, Harold E. Holt, at Northwest Cape. Harold E. Holt is a vast communications complex which covers 75 square kilometres of land on the tip and eastern shores of Northwest Cape in Western Australia. 4,000 kilometres from Sydney and 1,150 kilometres north of Perth, the station is so remote that comparatively few Australians have seen it, and most are unaware of its importance to the United States' deterrent to nuclear war and Australian defence. The station is part of a worldwide communications network, and its task is to relay messages to US, Australian and allied submarine and surface warships deployed in the Indian and Western Pacific Oceans. A strong and alert allied naval presence makes an important contribution to world peace, and this station supports that presence. Originally established as a US Navy communications installation, since 1974 the station has been jointly managed and operated by the navies of Australia and the United States. Morning, gentlemen. Rachel, please be seated. The station is commanded by a U.S. Navy captain, but the RAN component uh, the provides the deputy commander, 10% of the enlisted, and a quarter of the officer billets. Uh, understand that in the near future we'll be having a new station instruction out. What I think I'm going to need on that is a set of the alternatives taking into consideration the downtime and the consequences of long downtimes as opposed to short downtimes. Is, uh, is weather a factor in this? Could be if it extends on into cyclone season. We must remember that. Over 400 US and Australian naval servicemen and 200 Australian civilians are employed here and they form an efficient integrated team. Messages from US and Australian ships at sea and from Australian defence authorities are received here at the high frequency receiver site. We've got that, Jane. They arrive as a stream of encrypted electrical impulses and are automatically relayed by microwave over the 60 kilometres to the communications building at station headquarters. In this area also is located a US Navy satellite communications facility. Most US Navy messages are transmitted and received via satellite, but irrespective of the communications method, the process for all incoming and outgoing traffic is largely automatic, and the prime concern of this station is not the content of messages, but the efficient relay and transfer of message traffic from operational command centers to ships and submarines at sea. This relay function is monitored in the communications center's technical control facility, through which all message traffic passes. A special feature of technical control is joint manning, which ensures that the communications requirements of each nation are met. But joint manning does not extend into the separate national communications rooms where the secure electrical impulses are deciphered into plain language. There, privacy is essential for the security of each nation's military intentions and independent naval operations. This is a privileged view of the U.S. Communications Center. Usually only authorized U.S. Navy personnel are permitted in this area. The separate national communications rooms 
control all station reception and broadcast facilities. Their function is largely that of a post office. Much like telegrams, messages arrive, are sorted and dispatched to the destinations according to information and priorities determined by their originators. The Australian National Communications Room is a prohibited area also and accessible only to authorised RAN personnel. Similar to the US Communications Centre, it is a post office for the receipt and dispatch of Australian defence messages. Throughout the station, radio teletype is the prime communications method. But facilities for radio telegraph and voice communications are available also. Bellic Papan, this is X Mouth Control, send your routine over. Speed, reliability, and flexibility are essential ingredients of military communications. And here, all are available immediately around the clock. At the high frequency transmitter complex, adjacent to station headquarters, 37 transmitters provide immediate contact with ships, other Australian defence communication stations, and US bases in the Indian and Western Pacific Oceans. Reliability is provided by duplication of all essential systems throughout the station. But duplication extends far beyond transmitters, receivers and their components. It applies to whole stations. And should this facility ever fail, there are others to take over its main functions, even though perhaps less efficiently. Other Australian defence communications stations can meet our requirements, while other United States, Navy, Indian and Pacific Ocean bases can provide for their needs. The special advantage of Northwest Cape is its location, which permits optimum communications coverage of the Indian and Western Pacific Oceans, areas of importance to Australia and in which we desire a strong and friendly naval presence. importance in this deterrent strategy is the submarine. It is the only warship that can take full advantage of the unique environment of the ocean, where peculiar acoustic, chemical and temperature variant properties make submarine detection difficult, often impossible. Submarine communication is the main purpose of the Northwest Cape facility and it's achieved through this massive, very low frequency transmitter complex which covers more than 400 hectares at the tip of the Cape. At its centre is one of the highest man-made structures in the Southern Hemisphere, Tower Zero, which rises an awesome 387 metres. Tower Zero is the main support for the very low frequency antenna, a vast spider web of wire which spreads in a top hat configuration to the surrounding rings of towers. All towers in the field serve no other purpose than to support this massive antenna array. Buried beneath the antenna is 386 kilometres of copper wire which forms its ground plane and provides for efficient emission of more than 1 million watts of radiated power. Radio signals in the very low frequency or VLF bandwidth are able to penetrate water and can be reliably received over vast distances. Only a handful of staff are required to run the VLF transmitter complex. For it, like all other station broadcast facilities, is largely automatic and the main purpose of control room staff is to monitor the quality of radio signal being emitted. 
left console, over R.O. Truman speaking. Oh, can you bring up the drive? Okay. Uh, hold on. Hold the board, please. Hmm. Yeah, it is a bit low. The transmitter's output of more than one million watts is used to broadcast this vital signal to submerged US and Australian submarines operating in the vast Indian and Western Pacific Ocean areas. Transmitter and its components are enormous, and they need to be to handle the high power and low frequencies being generated. This is the Helix House, the transmitter's massive tuning apparatus. Here, the electrical current and potential for arcing is so great that all components have to be insulated from earth by vast all wooden structures. Here also, reinforced concrete and aluminium shielding is required to contain the million watts or more of radio power being generated. The signal is so strong that even from the safety of the Helix House observation platform, there is sufficient ambient power to light a handheld fluorescent tube. Looks like they're consuming an extra 104 watts. Yes, actually it is. It's not a standard 100 kilowatts, though. It does vary with power, of course. Oh, here we've lost the button. Should we look at the modulators, please? Looks like we've lost data on modulator 2. Well, we do have data from Verdon 1. Transmitter component failure is infrequent, but when it occurs, a replacement is immediately available, and expert electronic technicians to find and rectify the fault. Many are Australian civilians who supply much of the technical, administrative and domestic expertise required by the station. Some 60 kilometres from the communications station is another national asset, Learmont Airport. Primarily, it's a civil domestic airfield, but it has some military use also. A United States Air Force flight arrives here each week to bring equipment, mail and personnel important to the communications station and its US Navy staff. But mainly, Learmont serves as a civil airport for the town of Exmouth and the surrounding region. Commercial flights transit daily and Learmont is the alternate international airport for Perth. But it is a Royal Australian Air Force base also and although only periodically manned, it is being militarily developed as a long-term project. Today, military use is mainly limited to Orion aircraft undertaking surveillance missions, but Learmont is occasionally used to exercise the fighter and strike elements of the Royal Australian Air Force. The town of Exmouth is another product of the defence presence in the area. It was built in conjunction with the communications station to provide civil support facilities. Today, Exmouth is a thriving community of 3,000, blending business, trades, professional, Australian and American service families and they form a unique community which enjoys a measure of prosperity and facilities remarkable for a town of its size in Australia. Such prosperity is largely built on the salaries paid to Australian and American servicemen and civilian staff at the communications station. Tourism is also important and over 40,000 visitors, mainly Western Australians, come each year to this unique and remote area of Australia. 
They visit mainly in the April-September period to escape the southern winter chill and experience the warmth of Exmouth hospitality. Pleasure prevails in the local environment also. Ningaloo Reef hugs the Cape's Indian Ocean shore and offers great fishing and 207 kilometres of virgin coral gardens. Ashore, there are other unique attractions and among them the spectacular canyons in Cape Range National Park. are the consequence of time and tide on this huge upward fold of limestone which was born beneath the sea. Cape Range is the backbone of the Northwest Cape Peninsula and since emergence from the sea has conspired with it to form the vast sandy coastal plains that largely dominate the Cape. Here a wealth of Australian wildlife has made its home. in the communication station's vast antenna fields. Other feathered creatures are even more at home on the antennas. beauty in the unique wildflowers that carpet the plains in spring also. climate and sun is responsible for such magnificence. With an average of 3,500 hours sunshine each year, Northwest Cape is one of the sunniest places on Earth, and one of the places best suited to observe the solar phenomena which greatly influence man and his environment. The Learmonth Solar Observatory, built in 1977, is part of a worldwide network which monitors the sun's activity around the clock. Quite separate from the Naval Communications Station, it's jointly operated by the Ionospheric Prediction Service of the Australian Department of Science and Technology and the United States Air Force Air Weather Service. Quiet. Yes, sir. We have a significant event, Rod 1-1. Anything in optical? Uh, yes, we got a three brilliant flare in region 39.2. The sun's infinitely variable moods often frustrate man and his efforts. Severe solar disturbance causes the Earth's ionosphere to be bombarded with solar particles, 
often affecting space operations, communications, geophysical exploration, electricity distribution and other similar operations. The prime concern is with the impact of solar disturbance on communications systems. But information gathered here is widely disseminated to the world scientific community. Greater knowledge of this constant source of life and energy will ultimately help shape man's destiny. Yet it is the sea and not the sun which will influence our immediate future. Herein is the promise of food, energy and mineral resources for the benefit of mankind. But here also remains a critical theatre for the exercise of military power. Naval strength is a central element in Australian security and the Harold E. Holt Naval Communications Station is an important means of ensuring the strength and reliability of the naval forces of Australia and the United States in our region.